guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Advanced Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Welcome back to the score. Thanks for coming over. Okay, usapang ABL naman tayo and to see how things can turn around lalo na for our home team for Ala Pilipinas. But let's talk about uh, briefly about all the other teams. Mm -hmm. Start with the undefeated team, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, grabe, seven in owners sila, no? Uh, Martin Marks. Uh, Marks, your thoughts on this team right now and how obviously they've gotten so much better with, with Christian San Hardinger, yeah. buo yung team na to. Um, uh, what, what, how much better can this team be or ano pa bang kailangan din ayusin with a, a clean slate so far? Well, actually, TJ, very interesting. Yung start ng Hong Kong, first six games nila, ang winning margin lang nila is 5.2 points That's per right. game. That's right, yeah. Um, I think the mm -hmm. most yung win nila was 9 points against mm -hmm. CLS Knights. Right. Nag-overtime pa yun. Mm -hmm. Tapos, ay, yung pinaka-statement win nila was the latest one, which mm -hmm. was against the Formosa Dreamers right. in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But I think Hong Kong right now, I think more, they're looking for depth. Mm -hmm especially in the front line. Okay. Because after Christian Stan Harninger, mm -hmm. this year they lost Fong Xing Yi, one yeah. of their solid fours last year. Correct, yep. So after him, it's gonna be Tang Chi Hang, which mm -hmm. is 6-3. So mm -hmm. I think dun mag medyo magkakatalo yung Hong Kong. But you see mm -hmm. uh, the connection right now from Hong yeah. Kong. They don't need the bench at all to produce yeah. for them yep. to win games. Correct, correct. That's what's very interesting. And it's very also scary that uh, Marcus Elliott, Mm -hmm. uh, the reigning world import MVP, he's not even shooting well, mm -hmm. hasn't had like a nice shooting game. He's only had one, I think. Mm -hmm. One only decent game, yep. One decent game in the season, but he's producing on a high level. He's uh, doing his damage in other aspects, right. rebounds and assists. So, hindi pa puma palag yung Elliot, mm -hmm. yung lam sa lagi na Stan Hardinger, 7 right. 0 na agad. Yeah. Marks, you agree? Marami pa igagaling to Hong Kong. And it's a great point that Martin brought up na they've had close games, although they proved themselves that they can win in the clutch. Pero, uh, how, how scary is this team in terms well, of I think, getting better? Pa? I think they can be very scary, especially once they've really gelled together as a team. Uh, like what Martin said, nakita natin medyo kumakapa pa sila nung mm -hmm. first part of the first few games of the season. First blowout was against Formosa where mm -hmm. they hit that record and you know, Marcos Edit has yet to hit his stride. Tyler Lamb has been carrying a lot of the scoring load together with Stan Hardinger and I think they've re they've, they're, they're learning how to play with Christian Stan Hardinger mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with Ryan Moss and it's going to be very scary once uh, the locals start getting a lot of confidence and once Marcos Edit gets his, his, his stroke back Mm. Kumbaga. So they're going to be, they're still going to be probably one of the top two teams yes. in the league come the end of the season, All I right. feel. One of the interesting newbies, of course, uh, Tama ba, wala pa rin talo Kung Fu team. Mm. Yeah. They're 3 and 0. Uh, yeah, you've no. seen them play as well. Kama sing Kung Fu this year as a new team in the league. And yet, um, I know they're one of the sister teams no? of uh, uh, Hong Kong Eastern. Yes. So, you know, they've got that pedigree, that, uh, that background of a well run organization, yes. so to speak. Yeah. How good. Uh, are this this kung fu this kung fu team is this year? First of, they are a very tall team. Okay. Um, their smallest player six six, six flat. See si Jonathan Bermelo, yun yung heritage import nila. Mm -hmm. Phil Canadian. Pero next na sa kanya puro six four and above na yung players niya. Malalaki to mga to. Mm -hmm. Tapos they also have the one number one pick, former number one pick of the CBA, si, yeah. si Guo Kai. Guo Kai. I think that will be the third, fourth option for, for wow. Chung Son this year. So they're a very long team and they carry the level of basketball that China has. Mm -hmm. So I think that's right. gonna be uh, one thing that's going to manifest here. Mm -hmm. And yung mga heritage imports na si Kaylan Chung Son, he's a Draymond Green-like player, mm -hmm. likes to do a bit of everything on the floor. And you have Anthony Tucker, he's a, I think he is a less athletic Marcus Elliott, okay. but a more Diba? More composed okay. yeah. uh, player. Because it's smooth. Lang siya. Okay. Dito moves. Si so Marcos, we don't have a major bura rasha. Ah, right? Major oh, yeah. athletic. Ito si Anthony Tucker. He can do basically everything. Shoot shoot the ball very efficiently from the three point line. Pero suabi lang siya. In control, composed all throughout the game. And of course, you have Justin Howard. A, an ABL veteran. Correct. Uh -huh. uh, reigning defensive player of the year, anchoring the paint. So I think. At the end of the season, uh, fearless forecast. Right they're now. gonna be one of <laughs> Hong Kong. Right now, uh, one, <laughs> wow. They, they're either gonna be well, they're gonna be in the top three. Yeah, okay. most definitely. Well, they're three. You know, we've only seen three times, but yeah. a solid, solid team. Solid team, well balanced team. Oh. All right, Marks Singapore Slingers. They're they're three and three this year. They're kind of struggling. Last year they made it to the finals. We know yes. how strong this team is, and every year they're a very strong team. You know, this is a proud organization that started the ABL 
uh, many, many years back. But how does Singapore look this year to you? I think Singapore this year, they're in contention because of their system primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, they've lost a lot of, of talent. They lost Wong Wei Long. They've lost, uh, or Leon Quek is in and out because of national service. They've mm -hmm. lost Justin Howard, who was their, their go-to guy in the post. And right, yeah. um, from what we hear, they're replacing their other world import in Ryan Wright. So they're, they're trying to find their, their identity. They're, they've pinned their hopes on Savior Alexander as their number one option. Mm -hmm. For me, what is lacking with Singapore is a consistent outside threat. We've seen teams really pack it inside the paint against, against Singapore, and they've struggled offensively. But because there's such a well-disciplined team, defensively in particular, that's the system that uh, Coach Neil Bengxiang has really inculcated in Singapore. They're always in contention towards the end mm -hmm. of the game. And one Xavier Alexander, one of the most versatile imports yep. that you have in the ABL, uh, once he takes charge, they're, they're, very, they're a very tough team uh, in the clutch. So can't judge them from this 3-3 record mm -hmm. right now. This yes. team is better than that, obviously. Okay, Saigon Heat. Last year, they, they broke Malab's heart several times. You remember this team? Uh, we've had battles with them this year. Oddly enough, they only have two games so far. Yes. One and one pa lang sila, but yeah. what have you seen from them, uh, Martin? What do you like about Saigon this year? I think they are a better team okay. and they're more committed to winning now okay. because they got a coach from Canada. Mm -hmm. He's the reigning NBL. NBL is the local league there in Canada. Okay. NBL Coach of the Year. Wow. He's okay. the champion coach of the recent Jones Cup Okay. Uh, that, that represented Canada right, as well. Right, so okay. he's a champion coach. He knows what he is bringing to the organization. He wants to change the culture. And he started off by changing the imports. Mm -hmm. uh, they got rid of Lenny Daniel. They got rid of the other imports. Mm -hmm. He got his guys, okay. Akeem mm -hmm. Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very explosive point guard. I think he had 37 points in one game, 29 in the other game. Mm -hmm. He's a very streaky guard. Talagang coast to coast lang siya, ganun siya. Mm -hmm. Mabilis na player, but he is a leader. Okay. And they've known each other, si Akeem Scott, saka yung coach, si Kyle Julius, ah, okay. uh, since the NBL days. Wow, okay. So they have that solid familiarity. Yeah. Uh, may, may solid silang ganun. So mm -hmm. uh, the familiarity there, and he likes the leadership that Akeem brings to the organization. Mm -hmm. And as well as Travel Jones. They like to play fast kasi. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things for the Saigon Heat. Yung kinuha nilang import ngayon na uh, world import, si Travel Jones, mm -hmm. he's 6'8", 6'9", but he is athletic. Mm -hmm. He can run, can run yeah. the break. So I think that's one of the things to watch out for for the Saigon Heat this year. And I think that was, uh, that manifested in their game against Mono Vampire, at home at least. Mm -hmm. Yun nga lang, uh, when they came back to Bangkok to face Mono again mm -hmm. on the road, yun nga lang, kinulang sila, dun lang sila Medyo kukulangan kasi ngayon, I think they're short on their players. You only have six players mm -hmm. on rotation, but I think two or three players will be coming in okay. uh, in 2018 that hopefully will bolster their mm -hmm. lineup and you know their chances. Kasi I think two, si David Arnold nag-foul out, si Akeem Scott nag-foul out nung game nila against Mono Vampire, and they weren't able to recover. Ayun. So I think that's going to be... Well, obviously, you need more than six players <laughs> if you want to be competitive team, but those six are solid. Yeah. So interesting to see the pieces they will add. Mono Vampire, Marco, three and three, then Silla, another one of the new teams this yeah. year. Uh, how good is this team? And, and um, decent record so far, being one of the new teams. I think uh, in terms of local depth, well, they're one of the deepest teams. Mm -hmm. You have guys who, are been, who have been members of the Thailand national team, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Apiron Vilay Chai, guys like... Uh, uh, Jason Brickman has been solid distributing mm -hmm. one of the assist leaders. And uh, in terms of balance as well, outside shooting, they're also one of the best three-point shooting teams. They have a Paul Zammer, who is one of the better heritage imports mm -hmm. who can score. Yep. So they're going to be in contention. Probably, I would say they, they'll be in the top five, top six okay. uh, yeah. at <laughs> the, the end of the <laughs> season. <laughs> um, and it's just a matter of yung, the health of their world import. Yeah. Uh, Reggie Johnson, right. if he can get up and down with the other world imports. And if... Uh, Patrick Sanders can be a consistent scorer. Uh, this this mono vampire team can be a dark Itong horse. Itong Johnson yung medyo malusog. Yes. So you, when you say health, you mean, also mean, mean health and fitness. Yes, yes. health <laughs> and fitness. Because that's a big challenge. But anyway, he's a talented guy. Mm -hmm. Talented he's guy. Really big, Former yeah. uh, world import MVP. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, Westport Malaysia Dragons. Last year also well. A very interesting team. Very competitive mm -hmm. this year so far. One and two. What do you like about Westport Malaysia? Well, what I like about them is that you know they made a couple of changes mm -hmm. in their one-month break. I think they went to a one-month break because they, the locals at least joined a local league okay. in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So during the one-month break, they made two changes. They got rid of Real Cervantes. Mm -hmm. He's no longer with the team. 
and they replaced him with Joshua Monzon. Okay. Uh, their heritage import last year right, right. was also very productive. Mm -hmm. And they also added another center. They, they got rid of Curtis Washington, their temporary replacement for Solomon Jones, and they replaced it with AJ West, okay. a young guy, uh, athletic, a shot blocker. So, and um, based on their first game, they got off to a great start mm -hmm. in the season, beating Mono Vampire uh, by two points, double overtime. And that was a 60-point game by Marcus Marshall. So wow. basing on that mm -hmm. game alone, they didn't have the center or the big guy, that big guy na world import nila, wala mm -hmm. sila nun, but they managed to beat Mono Vampire in their home floor. Wow. I think that it's gonna be vital because the system is there already mm -hmm. for, for Chris Thomas. The Locos know what to do. Mm -hmm. The Locos know their roles in the system. Marcus Marshall is a very explosive guard mm -hmm. that can, you know, compete with the best of the players, the mm -hmm. best of the best world imports in the ABL right now. So I think they're going to be a scary and complete team once nice. once they get their act together. All right. And uh, interesting that there's a lot of new pieces, but yeah. we have time to put them together right yes. now. Um, Indonesia also in the mix, uh, Marco, this year, uh, the CLS Knights Indonesia. One and four sila. Uh, not, not a great record so far, but they've had some interesting games as well. Come on, Indonesia. Well, they, they're a pretty strong team at home, especially. They're mm -hmm. hard to beat at home. Hong, they took Hong Kong to overtime yep. in their home game. They mm -hmm. won their, they, their first home game against the Formosa Dreamers. Mm -hmm. I think they're also a team that's very familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you have guys like Wu Sang, uh, Sandy Kurniawan, uh, really good local support. But um, ever since Duke Cruz, their, their other world import, fell to injury, that they've struggled so far. Brian Williams has, has been trying to man the slot in the post. He's another hefty yep. import. But um, I think they're better than what the record uh, says about them at 1-4. and four. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a matter of time. Uh, if they get Duke Cruz back, that's yep. really going to change their fortune, in my opinion. Another 1-4 in four team for Mosa Dreamers right now. Is a patong baguhan uh, in the ABL. How are they faring so far for you, Mike? Well, they're a young team. Mm -hmm. You know, they're showing that youth, and I think they have a lot of things to figure out since this is their, this is their first official tournament mm -hmm. and on an, an international right. level. Pa. So it's really going to be difficult for them to figure things out. But I think uh, the intention is there, um, the organization, the culture eh, of winning. Well, wala pa don, pero yung yung backup nila, yung support system, all yung foundation out. nila as a team, they're mm -hmm. they're going all out with okay. the team. Uh, you, you, you see that in the home games, they really go all out in, in supporting the team. But right now, I, need, I think they need to make a couple of changes for mm -hmm. them to yeah. be able to improve the system. I think right now, they did the first step. Um, they, uh, not officially at least, got rid of Jalil Cazares. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, yeah. They replaced him with Reggio Cosa. Reggio Cosa. So hopefully, he's <laughs> already up. He's already up. He's already up. He's already So hopefully, uh, of course, uh, finds a home mm -hmm. in uh, Taiwan, and hopefully he finds a way to mesh with yep. Lenny Daniel because I think I think that's gonna be vital. And with J James Forrester also going down mm -hmm. with that Achilles injury, I think that's also big for yeah. for uh, for Mosa. They will need to at least acquire uh, one or two heritage mm -hmm. imports to help them out yep. in the the scoring. But I think right now the the locals are doing a phenomenal job mm -hmm. uh, holding down the fort. Yun nga lang, kinukulang talaga sila mm. sa huli in terms of uh, production, in terms of consistency, yep. bumibitaw pa. And leadership na rin. So and I leadership. guess it's up to Daniels and Ocos to really pick that up mm -hmm. for now. Alright, Ala Pilipinas, 1-3 right now, Marco. Uh, there's so much uh, excitement for them with Coach Jimmy Lepag coming in, Bobby yeah. Parks coming back, and some solid veteran import as well. Although we know Ocos is out, we are not yet sure who's coming in. We've heard some rumors <laughs> of uh, other veteran names. but So that's a Can't big confirm. question mark there, okay. a big piece of the puzzle. But beyond that, uh, what, what does Alan need to work out for right now? Well, I think uh, primarily the locals have to step up. Right? Mm -hmm. On paper, if you look at the, the lineup of Alan Pilipinas, some would, say, some would argue that they are a stronger team on paper mm -hmm. uh, versus last year's version of Artanduay Alan Pilipinas. So I think we, we've yet to see the locals step up on a more consistent basis. Mm -hmm. You're talking about guys like Robbie Celis, Don Don Ontiveros, yep. um, Oping Sobalino, of course, or Bistondo and Bobby Ray Parks. And uh, they have to gel better with... Uh, 
uh, with Ivan Johnson, who is their mm. current world import, yep. and uh, really, uh, as well as Lawrence Domingo, their heritage import. You, you, you expect a lot more from, from Tanduay Ala Pilipinas, and they're, they're much better, I feel, than their mm. one in three record yeah. so far. Mm. Um, they're they're going to have a home game on the third against West Sports Malaysia right. Dragons, mm -hmm. and after their first win against Formosa, it's going to be a big test for them to right. see if they can build some momentum yeah. going to the middle of the regular season. Big game, yeah, and against uh, West Sports, Dragons. West Sports mm -hmm. uh, their first game of the new year. How big is that for them? And in terms of pressure, you don't want to go out, you know, one and four and yeah. really struggling with the new import by that time. We're not sure who that is. Mm -hmm. We have some idea. But uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that game, Martin? How big that is for Alam? It sets the tone for the new year for, mm -hmm. for Tanway Ala Pilipinas because they ended the year, right, mm -hmm. with the win yep. against the, a convincing one as well yep. against the Formosa Dreamers. So you want to start off the year, start off the new year, the 2018 with the win as mm -hmm. well. And it, it's going to be a test also because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Westports will be no pushover. Yep. In, in that loaded, like, employing that system. It's going to be interesting for Tanway Ala Pilipinas if they can compete with that kind of uh, team that's mm -hmm. gelled already. Mm -hmm. But I, I also noticed with the Ala Pilipinas, in their first two games, they only had the total of or average half a sprint. In their past two they had 47 uh, so, games. See the system already uh, there, Ala Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not only with the players, but also with the coaches. I think the coaches are also getting more comfortable with yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. Coach Makuan being able, to, I think, to open up with Coach Jimmy. Yep. Coach Jimmy being able to open to communicate with the other coaches right, yeah. and the players. So I think that's, that's coming around right now for, mm -hmm. for Tanway Ala Pilipinas. And hopefully, uh, it translates to yeah. wins for them. In terms of leadership, Mark, I question mark, last year, compared to the, at least the first four games, Bobby Ray Parks was a little bit more aggressive yeah. last mm -hmm. year. Clearly more of the leader because they had younger imports, but this time around, must veteran imports. So I can imagine for him, how when to take charge, when to be very vocal. But um, you know, how's he gonna figure things out? How does Jimmy have to come in and say, okay, this is your team, you're gonna have to take charge certain times, or come say yung situation? Well, I atop? think primarily they have to. Uh, Ray has been deferring a bit big veteran local players and more veteran world imports. Yep. You're talking about Ivan Johnson, who is a, uh, a veteran of the PBA Awards, and you're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. Urbis Stondo, who is also a veteran yeah. uh, himself. So um, he's been deferring a bit more and not as aggressive in terms of scoring. Uh, yep. Against that game, uh, in that game against Hong Kong, he was aggressive in terms of scoring. So yep. he's really going to have to assert himself more, mm -hmm. um, even if there you have an Ivan Johnson, even if you have an even more veteran uh, world import coming in, even if you have guys like Joshua Bistondo and uh, Dondo Nonteveros, because uh, loc uh, in terms of local talent, he's probably up there um, talent-wise uh, among, the, among the locals. So he's really going to have to really fill that role, that leadership role, especially mm -hmm. for, for Tanduan. All right, malapit na malapit na. January... Three. Three? Three. Well, yes. just, that's next week. That's like uh, <laughs> shortly after New Year's when people are still just gathering their bearings. But back back on it para sa Ala Pilipinas. Thanks, Marco, Martin. Maraming Thanks, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Hi guys, keep watching The Score for the latest sports updates and don't forget to subscribe to the ABS-CBN Sports in Action YouTube channel.